We've learned that plasma membranes are selectively permeable barriers that separate the internal environment of the cell, the cytoplasm, from the extracellular fluid, the ECF, outside of the cell. There are different concentrations of chemical substances in both of these fluids, creating what is called a concentration gradient across a membrane. There is a higher concentration of a substance on one side of the membrane and a lower concentration on the other side of the membrane. For example, there are more sodium ions in the ECF compared to the cytoplasm. So we say there is a concentration gradient of sodium ions ranging from high to low concentration across the plasma membrane. Oxygen gas molecules are also found in higher concentrations outside the cell. On the other hand, potassium ions and carbon dioxide molecules are usually found in higher concentrations inside the cell cytoplasm. It's important to emphasize that each chemical substance has its own concentration gradient. Because of the difference in distribution of the charged ions, an electrochemical gradient is also generated across the membrane. The outer face of the membrane is usually more positively charged, while the inner face carries a negative charge. This difference in charges is called the membrane potential. We often describe a chemical's movement across a membrane as either downhill or uphill. If a chemical is moving from a high to a low concentration, we say it's traveling downhill or down its concentration gradients and doesn't require any additional energy to power this transport. This is like riding a bicycle downhill where you don't need to pedal, you just let gravity carry you down the hill. If a chemical is moving from a low to high concentration, we say it's traveling uphill or against its concentration gradients. This type of transport requires additional energy in the form of ATP. This is like riding a bicycle uphill where you have to exert extra energy and pedal harder to make it up the hill. Living cells require a diversity of chemical substances for their survival and they must be able to transport these substances both into and out of the cell, across the membrane. The three major types of membrane transport processes that we see in cells are passive transport, active transport, and vesicular transport. Passive transports is the movement of chemicals down their concentration gradient or downhill across a membrane from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. It's passive because there is no additional chemical energy, such as ATP, needed to transport the substances. The chemicals being transported just use their own kinetic energy. Active transport, in contrast, requires energy in the form of ATP to move chemical substances across a membrane. These chemicals are moving against their concentration gradients or uphill across a membrane from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. In addition to ATP, active transport also requires specialized transport proteins like channels or carriers to pump substances across the membrane. Vesicular transports is a variation of active transport that uses little membrane sacs called vesicles that are pinched off the plasma membrane. They are used in the imports and export of larger chemicals such as macromolecules or volumes of fluid containing large quantities of dissolved solutes. One example is endocytosis, where large amounts of chemicals are brought into a cell 
by pinching off a vesicle that moves the package of chemicals into the cytoplasm. 